Hello and welcome back to the Join Dota League Season 3 here on Hefoot TV 2. Well, as you prefer your casters, I'm Grandis Fien. I'll be joined by Mike Loris for his Game 2 of a Best of 2 series between No Fear Dota and the Thundercats. Um, I don't know, as far as Game 1, do you want to go ahead and introduce that to us? Well, Guanza went nuts with a Slark, and I don't think there's much else to say. Slark with Tree and Protector is a really nice combination. It lets Slark be super aggressive as the hero normally does like to do, but is often hamstringed by the fact that he is rather soft, especially when going up against a Skywrath Mage. And, well, that's enough about that because this draft is going on pr pretty quickly, I'd say. But we have Death Prophet, Skywrath Mage, going to be the first two picks. Instantly, Death Thundercats can respond with Razor Doom. So, no fear, Dota. Going to get a little bit of pushing for themselves with that Death Prophet. But we'll get, we're going to see how deep they want to go into that, or if they're just happy with picking up the Death Prophet and just having that be all their push that they want. Yeah, I know. Even as a standalone hero, Death Prophet can really make a lot of hurt happen to those towers. Uh, just being able to commit to those at level 11 is very strong. And even if she gets doomed, it's usually not the biggest deal for Death Prophet, is you're going to build her fairly tanky, so the damage doesn't do that much. Um, although it's annoying to deal with, but as long as she gets her exorcism off first, um, she's still able to still be Death Prophet, even when she's doomed. It's it's not her Crypt Swarm spam that really makes her scary. Um, I don't know, Earthshaker, the next pickup for No Fear Dota. I really like this pick with the Skyrath Mage as well. A really good aggressive roaming duo that can make a lot happen around the map. Although Razor, not the easiest skill, he definitely could be a target of it. And, I don't know, Doom and Lane's going to probably be completely zoned out. More than anything, this duo is going to put a lot of pressure on their mid, which is going to be Invoker this game. All right, Thundercats picking up the three cores, going to be skipping their supports until a little bit later. I don't really see any clear support picks from them. I mean, obviously, the real powerful ones are already well, either in or out of this game. Skyrath Mage, Earthshaker, uh, the Shadow Shaman also out, Wraith King also out. And Thundercats don't really have any clear synergy as of yet. I mean, they have a couple of tanky heroes. They don't really have much setup for Invoker yeah, Sunstrike, so maybe they want to build around that for their last two supports. Yeah, I don't know. I, as far as their next supports, I wouldn't be opposed to like a Shadow Demon Marana coming out from them. Uh, but then again, if they pick up one of them, it's liable that the other would be banned out. Um, I think that would be a really solid roaming duo for them, as well as being able to set up the Sun Strikes and get a guaranteed link off from the Razor. Um, I don't know, but yeah, nothing that really screams like it needs to be in the lineup of the Thundercats. They just kind of have three good heroes that are kind of clumped together. Well, I mentioned it in game number one. Yep. Pulling for that Omni Knight, although I'm pretty sure it's always DK who plays the Omni Knight, so that's the offlane player for Thundercats, and that will be a whole just mess if they do decide to end up playing like that. But yeah, they're going to need their final two supports, and really, they sh I think they just want to make sure that their supports are self-sufficient on their own, and no fear. Well, they're going to pick up that Marana, so the combo that you mentioned, not available any longer for the Thundercats, is no fear. Pick themselves a pretty nice lane in the Marana, Earthshaker, and Skywrath Mage. Yep, the Thundercats going to go with the Shadow Demon anyway. It's still a great setup for the Invoker. Maybe we're going to be seeing a Kunkka or Lashrak, or even a Lina. I would love to see a Kunkka or Lashrak. Lina, not as much. I think she's kind of outclassed by the other two. Uh, doesn't push as fast and doesn't transition as well unless she really snowballs. Um, but I think Lishrak would offer a lot better push for the Thundercats, and Kanka could help them in their AoE teamfights as well as giving them something that scales a little bit later. As it stands, the Thundercats already have a slight late game advantage, I would say. Um, but yeah, if it was a Kanka, it would more than likely be a roaming support Kanka, unless we saw like a Shadow Demon Kanka offlane with Razor solo safe and Doom and Jungle. Although that would be incredibly greedy coming out from the Thundercats. I don't think we'll see that. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to see Lashrak or Kunkka, although Lina's still pretty Ten solid. Seconds to go. I think as long as they pick someone with a stun, they would be in pretty good Ten shape. Because right now, yeah. Invoker, he has you know some of his Invoker crowd Die control. Epic. It's by no means a guaranteed lockdown. Shadow Demon stun is not really Shadow Demon stun, uh, a real stun, especially when you're dealing with Marana, who can just leap out. They have Doom for the Silence, but that's about it. They need something to keep this Marana down, something to keep this Death Prophet from just sprinting away with their Yule Scepter phase boots later on in the game. So Thundercats, they're going to need to pick themselves up some really nice CC. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing a Lion, though, yeah, no fear. Big. They're going to pick up the Pugna, so it looks like in the end they will go for a little more pushing. I expect to see this game end in a very quick manner, or else no fear are just going to get out late gamed. Yeah, I would say that that's pretty fair. But Skyrath Mage as well as Pugna are really scary duo together, even though 
on opposite sides. Pugna has a really strong advantage up against the Skyrath, but a lot of magic nuke damage coming out from both of them, as well as ways to amplify it with the Decrepify as well as Ancient Seal. Um, as far as the line pick, I would definitely be game for that one as well, although he doesn't really need the setup for his stun, uh, still getting in range for it would be very useful, and then later on, once he gets the Finger of Death, if you get Disruption into Soul Catcher with Finger, that's a whole lot of damage, especially if you uh, calculate a Sun Strike in on top of that, I don't think a single hero on the side of No Fear Dota would be able to survive against that without a BKB or a lot of farm. Yeah, maybe a Death Prophet when she gets like a Bloodstone or something, but no one else on their side is nearly tanky enough to withstand that type of combination. But yeah, Thundercats, they're, I think they're thrown for a little bit of a loop with this final Pugna pickup. With the Mirana, Urshaker, Skyrath Mage, uh, you don't really expect them to go into pushing after the Death Prophet, but it looks like in fact it will be that Kunkka that we were talking about before, so it's most likely going to be a support Kunkka, and I think we're going to be right as Salen's going to pick that hero for himself. So, Kunkka Shadow Demon, can they get the rotations off and slow down this Pugna? If they can, and delay the push, then come late game, Thundercats are going to have a really easy time. Yeah, definitely. I think it's all about weathering the storm that's going to come about 15 to 20 minutes in. Uh, is really when No Fear Dota are going to start pushing down those towers very aggressively. Once they get like a mechanism up on your Pugna, Death Prophet gets up her early items, like Phase Yule, something along those lines. And then we'll start seeing whether the Thundercats are up to the task. I don't know. On the Radiant side, it is going to be the Thundercats with Stan and DK playing on the Invoke Reality on the Razor. Christine playing on the Shadow Demon. He had a really good treat last game. Salon on the Kunkka sporting the new Divine Anchor set. And the Offlane Doom will be handled by Guanzo, who played the Slark last game. It's a little bit interesting to see this uh, sort of lane swap coming out from them. Uh, but either way, uh, that's how it's going to pan out. On the No Fear Dota side, we got Earthshaker going towards the bottom lane, played by Mago. 9-0 is going to be on the Skywrath Mage, and Arf is going to be joining them as the Pugna. So it's going to be an aggressive tri lane for No Fear Dota. Zido is going to be handling the Death Prophet mid, and Robert Niemeyer is going to be top lane as Marana. And yes, in case anyone is wondering, the score is currently 1-0 in favor of TC in this best of two. So, I mean, there's no uh, final game. This is the final game. And it looks like, well, they're smoked up very early on. Decrepify picked up at level 1. They really want to get a kill here. And with the magic damage that they have... They might be able to get it. Uh, Salen, though, is kind of tanky as far as supports go. So we'll see if this smoke actually leads anywhere. They're going to have to run straight into Salen. And I don't think that's really going to happen. He, the Shadow Demon's right next to him. Like, he's, he can get there pretty quickly. And it looks like they're just going to back off after placing an Observer Ward. Yeah. I don't know. The smoke at least secured them the ability to roam into the enemy jungle without being detected. But in the end, it doesn't really do much for them. Um, they are kind of waiting around to see who's going to rotate towards the rune. Kunkka might be caught unawares, because I'm not sure that they expect this offensive tri lane to come out. Um, but for now, Salen's just kind of chilling back, and that's going to be about it. They're pinging him out, and they want to go for him. Let's see if it's going to succeed. They start with the Pugna. He's going to get the Decrepa Eye. Where's the Fissure coming out? The Arcane Bolt will come through, as well as the Fissure. But the Torrent going to be nicely juked. In the end, they just don't have enough damage. Don't even drop him to below half. Yeah, this advantage for No Fear Dota should be sustained for a little while longer. Invoker at level 1 is pretty unimpressive, and he's really not that impressive until he gets to the level 5-ish mark. Then he'll be able to do some pretty good work, but... Oh, we... I didn't even notice this. This is going to be a core shaker with a support Pugna. Um... Okay. Well, the Shadow Demon is going to eat the Decrepify, but I don't like this choice at all uh, coming out from them. I don't know. It, it can be a lot of fun to watch, but in the end, I think Pugna just needs to farm a little bit more. And delaying the Arcane Boots as well as core items to tank up the Pugna, noticeably that mechanism uh, from him is really going to harm NFD, I feel. Their timing window is going to be very small when they're actually going to be able to do stuff before they completely phase out of this game. This Earthshaker needs to make some huge plays with the Blink Dagger that they're going to be securing with this early farm for him. And no fear, they have to make kills happen on this bottom lane. Ordinarily, if this Pugna was farming, I would say, okay, if the lane is even, it doesn't matter because Pugna's getting his levels, he'll have blasts, and they'll be able to push later. Pugna is going to be in a full-on tri lane. Now they're going to start initiating onto the Earthshaker. Sunstrike will land, as will the turret. Mago is going to be dropped very low. The Decrepire will save him a little bit of time, but I don't think it's going to be enough. DK with the right clicks needs one more. The salve will keep him alive, but now they're going to focus on to 9 -0. DK taking quite a bit of damage. The Pugna does have some decent right clicks. But it looks like, for now, everyone from TC getting roughed up pretty badly. Urshaker will be salved up, and he'll return to full shortly. But, yeah, I think this lane is uh, maybe going for Carry Shaker or Core Shaker for the sake of Core Shaker. 
the Pugna farming would be so much stronger for No Fear Dota because it'll let them push stronger. Yeah, I don't know, it's also pretty concerning since they're not able to get the kills and Earthshaker not really able to farm very much in this lane. It's going to have them falling behind very early, especially since a lot of the regen's already been eaten through. The ability to play aggressively in this lane is going to be stymied for quite a bit. They leave the Invoker down in bottom, and he should be fine as long as he doesn't walk up, so it looks like mid is going to be the next place where they go, and Shadow Demon with Invisible you're in the perfect rune for him to get, but it was spotted out by an Observer Ward, so I'm not sure Death Prophet's going to get caught out. Now with the Kunkka going back to lane, um, not really a very high probability kill. Hey, keeping the Death Prophet back is going to be pretty nice for Razor. He is already sitting very comfortably at 11 CS and 9 denies over this Death Prophet, so he has a nice little experience edge over her, and we'll take a look at the top lane real quickly. 12 for 2 for the Marana, whereas Doom's sitting at 14 for 1. Of course, that 14 is kind of inflated due to extra Devour Gold, so Doom's doing just fine up there. And then at that point, all eyes turn down to the bottom lane. Can this Earthshaker get enough as they do his shape onto DK once again? However, a beautiful two-man torrent is going to slow them down. DK is going to slip away, although he will be chased down by one more bird. He should live just fine, though he might have to base, because he doesn't have any quas. He's going to get the healing salve ferried out to him shortly. Yeah, so in the end, he might get caught out, but no, no. Playing in, in the trees, he should be just fine. The Decrepify is nice and all with the um, Scarath Mage and Earthshaker combination. It does a lot of magic nuke damage, but in the end, they just don't have the right clicks to follow up after that. And it gets them low for sure, but they're not able to get the kills in the end. Nor do they really have the levels. They're going a full-on aggressive tri lane that, though it has shut down the Invoker's farm somewhat... In, in hand, and has secured farm for the Shaker, they're still not getting that many levels. So they are still technically winning this bottom lane. I don't think they're winning it by enough. They should be looking for kills constantly here, but they actually don't do that much damage. They could focus someone down, possibly, but with Shadow Demon coming in with a double damage rune, no fear Dota, they have Earthshaker who's very low. They have to watch themselves, and they should know about Christine's double damage rune. Although Pugna is playing very far up. Unfortunately, there's no X... Oh, there is an X marks, Arkanka. But it looks like this fight may or may not happen. Christine will put the Pugna in a bubble. Then the Torrent and Sunstrike. Arsene can take so much damage. That's her first blood right there. I don't know how Shadow Demon got it. But hey, it's a kill for him. And Arf is going to be the first one to die. Yeah, in the end, that combo just lined up perfectly. And well, now an X mark onto the Earthshaker with the Torrent to fold up. Migo not going to be too healthy here in the bottom lane with no more regen. The Soulcatcher is actually going to land a 9-0, a little bit unfortunate, but they'll be able to get the Fissure onto Christine. It looks like he'll give up the return kill, but Migo looks like he's also going to die. He's caught in the woods and Cold Step. Going to be enough to secure there. The Kunkka gets the last hit in the end. And while Arf, he wants a little bit of blood, it's kind of awkward going in there as a level 3 Pugna. Um, but in the end, we'll be back off. There was no mana on DK or on Salen. Yeah, Pugna is a hero that's not actually very self-sufficient as a support. Like, he's going to be hurting on levels, and in that case, Nether Ward's going to be really great, but Narf is going to go right back into DK. He does get the Drepify off, and a lot of damage onto this Invoker, but now the Torrent is not going to be thrown from Salen. They will back off after uh, just saving their Invoker, so no fear Dota. They're still putting a lot of pressure onto Thundercats in this bottom lane, but uh, they ended up giving up a couple of kills, and things just not going perfectly for them. And when you're running a Core Shaker, you really need things to go swimmingly. And if that doesn't happen, your Core Shaker isn't going to be hitting for as much as you really would want him to, because he doesn't even have Enchant Totem yet. Yeah, I also kind of not a big fan of this build coming out from the Earth Shaker. When you're playing a Core Shaker, you really want that extra damage from Enchant Totem to be maxed almost ASAP. Like, Fissure, it's nice to level as a support because you're not able to do much else, but when you get that early Blink Dagger online, uh, really all you need from the Fissure is that... Um, blocking, which doesn't scale, but Doom actually gets the kill up in top, committing that Doom spell, and then Murano wasn't able to make her way out of there. Um, I saw him playing aggressively, but in the end, I thought Murano was able to leap away, but I don't know, not going to be so lucky as she was brought down, and Guanzo just having the time of his life up in top, very little that Murano can do to him at this point. I feel like no fear, oh, they're going to cast Christine, very awkward positioning for the Shadow Demon, though they're also going to get initiation onto Arf, it's going to be a one for one, killing off a support for a support, Kunkka taking that one, Skyrath Mage taking that one. Overall, it's uh, pretty damn even, I would say. So, even trades on this bottom lane, but of course, the even trade will benefit the defensive lane. They're going to silence up Kunkka, so he's going to be able to cast nothing, though he doesn't have mana to do so anyway. But, uh, yeah, I feel like No Fear Dota, they would have benefited so much more if in this lane there was a Vengeful Spirit instead of this Earthshaker, who's going to find Salen in the corner. I don't know why Salen's just chilling there. He's going to try to use the Torrent, but he will get clipped with that 
uh, Crypt Swarm as Mago does drop fairly low. DK trying to get into the trees, but he won't have the timer place to do it. He's going to finally get in there with the cross, cross runes active, trying to regenerate, but he doesn't actually have that much backup. Sunstrike will whiff onto Mago. He's going to dodge one more Crypt Swarm. DK will dodge another skill. He's survived for very long, but he did go down at the end. Teleportation coming in. It is going to be the Kunkka. He has a level 3 Torrent, so this could hurt pretty bad if he lands it on anyone, but it will be difficult to do so. He's going to catch Zyda with the X Torrent, but there's no follow-up for this one. Christine is here. They're fighting in the Nether Ward, however. Curse now onto the Death Prophet. They're going to put a lot of damage onto her, but the Nether Blast is going to come through. Actually, not hit onto anyone as Arf takes the tower at aggro. Razor's going to teleport right in. Zyda going to get burned down really quickly. We'll try to get a kill on the Shadow Demon. That's not going to happen, and Razor actually, with that level 4 Plasma Field, killed off the Pugna in the meantime, TC, they're a little bit slow in mobilizing, but a top lane, Doom onto the Mirana as Doom secures another kill for himself solo up top. Yeah, Reality was a little bit late to that fight, so it didn't go the greatest for them, but overall, I mean, they lost just as much as they gained, and still Doom's having a great time, so TC, they have to be pretty happy about how this is going. Yeah, I don't know, Doom, every time that Doom is off cooldown is punish the Mirana for coming back into this lane. Death Prophet's gonna show her face now, um, but yeah, Death Prophet as well as the Razor going for some very peculiar builds here with Razor. No points in the ultimate, no points into the passive, just straight up into the link as well as the plasma field. And as for Death Prophet, she didn't get her ultimate until now, which I think is um, a little bit better than no passive, no ultimate Razor. Uh, yeah, the unstable current is usually a must-have, but the fact that no fear Dota actually haven't even tried to go for a kill on this Razor, means that he doesn't actually need the Unstable Current to uh, punish the Death Prophet, because I don't think anything will actually proc that. Uh, it will protect him later on from Decrepify, from Targeted Fissures, from the Skywrath Mage spells, and that's when he's really going to want it, but he hasn't actually interacted with those heroes yet. So going for this build, I think, considering the circumstances is fine, in any other game it would be a little bit incorrect, but now he's going to get Gusser Shot and Fissured. That's a lot of damage being thrown towards him, but... In the end, he's just going to haste Rune away. Really, no fear Dota. They're relying very heavily on this burst from Decrepify plus the Ancient Seal. They're just going to dump all the magic out. Top lane, though. They're going to initiate once more onto Zydo of all people. I thought it was Mirana, but Moonlight Shadow and Death Prophet is going to slowly slip away down south. She's going to be just fine. Reality in a little bit of trouble on the bottom lane, but is he? Echo Slam's going to hit him really hard, but he still has some haste Rune. It's not going to be enough. The magic amplification is huge on this Razor. And no fear, they have a lot of burst in this lane. Yeah, I don't know, in the end, it's kind of been all four heroes committed down in bottom as Zamorada just hasn't shown her face up in top for the longest time. Invoker getting a lot of damage on the tier 1 tower in mid with the one Forge Spirit working away there. Uh, but also tier 1 tower in bottom not looking too healthy either as the level 3 Pugna Blast has come online for NFD. So at the end of the day, they are going to be able to put this Pugna to decent use, I suppose. Um, but yeah, it's going to be pretty much just a one for one tower trade. What? Reality's yeah, back in this fight though. He's gonna kill, get a kill on the Skywrath Mage and now chase after her. Well, the Pugna will dodge the Sunstrike, but they're gonna try to juke around the trees. I don't think you can escape that Pugna. That's not gonna happen. Razor, he loses the tower, but he collects a couple of heads in response. He's at 1400 gold with the power treads. I don't know if he's gonna be going for the mech. He's not because Doom already has a mech. So Razor, well, uh, maybe a quick Aghanims or maybe he just wants to bulk up because he has to worry about this magic damage. A straight BKB Razor might not be too bad. Yeah, I don't think it would either. Um, but yeah, for now it is going to be just kind of a standoff. As far as the Razor's item choice, yeah, BKB straight up would be nice. Although there is some decent physical damage coming out from MFD with the um, Death Prophet's uh, Exorcism. So maybe just the stats from Agnims would help him a little bit more. I don't know, I think both would be solid choices. Fish are going to block him on the wrong side. Will they be able to secure this kill? I don't think so, especially with the Enchant Totem not landing. And now he's doing a whole heck of a lot of damage with that maxed out um, Link. He won't be able to secure the kill and is going to try to TP out as he's getting live stream. Will the damage be there? Will. And in the end, Arf is going to survive. Sunstrike? Show me something, Invoker. Show me something, because they're both real weak. Ugh, oh, boo, Invoker. Ooh, he has to worry about Zydo in the mid lane because the gank is incoming and Christine is going to open things up with a bubble, but he only has brown boots. Phase on the Death Prophet means it's very, very hard to catch her by surprise. So, I mean, the Razor getting a little bit out of his depth. He's going to go for drums, it looks like. So, you know, a nice solid middle of the road item. Can't really be too angry about that. But uh, if he just turned around and just started right clicking people, canceled his TP. He would have gotten, at the very least, that Pugna kill, and I think with the damage he was putting out, he probably could have gotten the kill on the Shaker as well. Yeah. 
I don't know, for now, the map has kind of been spread out. Not a huge amount of five manning down the towers, with the exception of both of the tier ones on the safe lanes. Um, yeah, Doom, he does manage to find himself the Alpha Wolf fairly early on. I don't think he'll be giving that one up uh, for quite some time at the very least. It's going to add to the pushing power coming out from his team, especially with Forge Spirits and the Invoker working out. He's going to get silenced down in bottom, but he has backup. I'm not sure what that was really about. In the end, just a little bit more harass damage coming up from the Arcane Bolts, which is annoying for him to deal with, but now with the X Mark, as well as the Torrent onto Nino, he's going to be brought down very quickly. In the end, Kunkka gets last hit with a double damage rune. He will get fissured up in the back lines, however, and now with Zydo in the fray, they might be able to chase down this Kunkka, but they don't have a way to lock him down. And with only level 1 Exorcism, already used I don't know it's not really gonna be that impactful yeah the Murano's up on top lane chipping that out but Guanzo really showing how much damage you can put out as this doom this is not I mean though it is a core doom it's a uh, not exactly a damaging doom like he's not going for smash yet he's gone for mech Mego in the meantime wants to go for DK but getting a bead on this poker is very tough without using your fissure to open it up and Earthshaker is holding on to a good amount of gold but his Blink Dagger isn't really going to be that fast, all things considered. Arf going to try to D-Ward. Reality's going to catch him, though. Arf, I think he might be able to survive for a little bit. Oh, this is going to be brutal. Sunstrike might just kill him off. Kaboom. Uh, I thought he would survive for a little bit longer and decrepifying himself, but ultimately the D-Warding fails, so it looks like Nino will ultimately take care of that. Reality getting a couple kills for his team here and there. And still the Invoker, though he has been more or less shut down in the lane. He's 0-1-5 one, one, and five with those Sunstrike assists. He's still contributing quite a bit, and now they're going to go in again. Mago going to get torrented and boated and meteored. Jeez, Earthshaker, try surviving that. Salem stuck in an arrow, but the rum making it so difficult for them to bring him down. Mystic Flare did barely anything to that Kunkka because of that rum. That's something you don't really see all that often, a hero sitting in the Mystic Flare and just chilling. But, hey, that rum's pretty strong, and it has a lot of uh, alcohol, I guess. Moran in a little bit of trouble. Christine will close in for the Disable, and the Curse actually goes onto R from the back line, but Invoker going to straight for Nino, using that Cold Snap, Salen still taking a lot of damage, but he's going to be pretty healthy, DK trying to 1v2, he's going to dodge the Blast, at the very least, Robert yeah, is very low on mana, can't actually use another leap, but here comes Bonzo from the side, already used the Doom onto Zydo, this Doom will kill off the Death Prophet, it looks like Sunstrike will kill her off, I lied, there's another... Plaza field, and they're going to get a kill on Nino, although Mago is going to get a two-man Echo Slam do doing some pretty good damage to Guanzo. He will get saved by his friendly Shadow Demon, and he will be forced to, yep, use the mech. Mago will be burned down in the end by the Invoker. Still Nino is in the back end. DK chasing through the back lines. They're going to go for Robert. They're going to bring him down with another Plasma Field. Uh, this game is kind of repeating the last one, as this time TC, as a team, they're just overrunning No Fear Dota. And this Core Shaker... He only has Arcane Boots 14 minutes in. It's pretty much a Core Shaker with Support Shaker amount of farm. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the last hits, it is pretty much in the support position in this game, and he just doesn't have anything and hasn't been able to contribute much to his team, whereas this Kunkka almost has his drums finished. He's farming uh, better than the Core Shaker. I mean, they already have a pair of drums on the Razor, but when you're playing so aggressively, having the two charges could be beneficial with just chasing people down. Um, honestly, I would have liked to see a blink on the Kunkka maybe a little bit more uh, than the straight-up drums. Um, or, at the very least, upgrade your boots to Arcanes or Phase. Yeah, especially since the Razor already has boots. The Aura is redundant, but uh, you're usually okay with stacking one or two of those drum auras. And But uh, the Invoker also has, so... Uh, where's the drums from the Shadow Demon and where's the drums from the Doom? They really need to get just all the drums in the world so they have literally unlimited drum usages, but uh, yeah, it's kind of redundant, their item builds, but hey, it's working out because it's still 15-6, to 6, they have a very comfortable advantage in this game, and as we said before, come late game, it's going to be really hard for No Fear Dota to compete, as they do get another initiation on to 9 -0. Sunstrike is going to pretty much kill him off, and Salen's going to dodge an arrow in the meantime. It's a free kill on the Skywrath Mage, and it was so, so easy. Yeah, I mean, this Shadow Demon... He's been able to set up so many kills. Whenever there's a disruption, it's pretty much going to lead to a death. As long as Salen's there to follow up with the um, Torrent as well as the Invoker with the Sunstrike. And with Exhort, six levels into that, or rather five, it's hurting quite a lot. Especially for the squishy heroes like the Skyrath Mage and the Pugna, who really hasn't been able to pick up anything this game at all. He has a Magic Stick and Brown Boots, and as a support Pugna, you really don't expect much more. The really scary thing is, for No Fear Dota, is that, I'm sure they don't know this, but Shadow Demon actually has gone for maxed out Shadow Poison, which I would say in this, in, in any game is fine, but this could be a game where you want to max out Soul Catcher, so the disruption set up with a Torrent and Sunstrike 
can get so much stronger. That is just terrifying to think about. Like, they've been able to pretty much 100 to 25, pretty much any hero that they get their hands on. When you get a couple more points of Soul Catcher, that's easy, 100% to zero. Like, within the blink of an eye, they will be able to get kills on whoever they initiate on. Yeah, very easily, and, well, it looks like it's going to be a fairly straightforward game for the Thundercats to start working out. Uh, where's the comeback potential coming out from NFD? I think really what they need first is a Blink Dagger on this Earthshaker. He's trying to farm it up as much as possible, but he's just not a very fast farming hero, and if he gets killed by the Doom, it's going to be even worse. Is Guanza going to Doom him and now just run him down? Sunstrike, oh, the kill steal coming out from DK. He's going to silence up Guanza coming up from Sky with Mage. The ulti's just not doing enough damage, but with the Decrepify, it will be enough, and now... They will secure that kill. Now that Yule's up the race, they might be able to make this more with the Exorcism. I sure hope for them it will be enough. I think Reality's going to be able to run out here alive. They shoot an arrow and actually hits onto Reality. Not sure if he was expecting it or not. They do get the Torrent Boat onto Z or Zido and Zido. Is he going to fall with the Marana Ultimate? He's painting it in invisibility and, well, Zaylin's going to be the one that's chased down. The Ghosts aren't doing full damage onto him. He has those drums in the face boots to keep himself decently set. The Shadow Demon's here. He's going to drop a Torrent on the ground, but in the end, the Crypt Storm will secure a double kill for Zaydo, and the Thundercat's just overextending a little bit too much there. Yeah, the Razor tried to... Oh, but another one's going to get caught as Christine gets thrown into the air. Arrowed as well. Thundercats, uh, they fell apart, pretty much. Like, the Razor tried to come in to help the Doom by popping a jump charge, and then the Razor got caught. And then the Kunkka caught the Death Prophet and trying to help the Razor, but then Razor died, and then Kunkka got caught. And then Kunkka was trying to run to his allies, and he was brought down, and Shadow Demon tried to save the Kunkka, and then Shadow Demon got caught. So, No Fear Dota had, like, the most perfect array of events happening in sequence, and they can't obviously depend on those events happening like that again, since... I feel like that's just an anomaly, but hey, it's freaking hilarious to see a Salem once again in a little bit of trouble. He's going to try to open up onto Mago, but the Echo Slam is going to bring Salem down really low. Decrepify, though, and it might... No, it's, yeah, definitely be enough damage. No physical, but still the magical damage from this Pugna and Skywrath combo is the real deal. Thundercats, they were in a very comfortable lead, and I still say they are, but no fear Dota showing that they could actually put out some pretty serious damage when the time comes. Yeah. Definitely, as long as they're able to find people out of position, they definitely have the ways to punish that. Yule Scepter by the Death Prophet coming in huge. They're setting up for two of those kills, and out the Blink Dagger and the Earth Shaker, there's definitely ways that uh, No Fear Dota can uh, start these engagements on the right foot, as long as the Thundercats aren't um, very coordinated, or they try to save each other a little too much like they did in that last engagement. Uh, Shadow Demon... Does have his finished up arcane boots, and a lot of items are also being built by the Thundercats cores. As we have a BKB coming out for the Razor, I believe that's completed on him. The Necronomicon 3 on the Invoker, as well as a Doom going for Aghanim Scepter about um, two thirds of the way there. And no fear, Dota. They have, you know, two of the strongest pushers in the game. Like, they have Pugged on Death Prophet. It doesn't get much better than that yet. They have only taken down one tower in this game. They're actually very far behind in towers as they themselves only have a single tier 2 tower left. So they can, at the drop of the hat, take towers, but the longer that this is delayed, this is just gold that they're not getting. If they had all these towers down, they would be able to get their Aghanims and Blink Daggers and BKBs and Necro 3s and stuff like that, but they're just not getting those giant bags of gold. TC, they're defending and by they're defending their towers by being super aggressive. So, you know, best offense good defense, all that good stuff. And it's going to be yet another aggressive play in order to defend their top lane. It'll be a free tier 2 tower up for them as No Fear Dota thinking about going for Roshan. They have to use Exorcism for this and they have no good hero to tank it. They can't do that. It just won't happen. Yeah, if they tried to, it would either end up disastrously where the Thundercats are able to fight the Roshan pit uh, with a blink on the Doom. They definitely could jump into the midst of it, get a Doom on a high priority target and end up killing somebody. Or they'd end up just pushing into the high ground uh, with the Necronomicon units and getting a lot of damage, if not taking a tier 3. Do you think it's time for Thundercats to just go for it a high ground? I think they could clear Doom, the uh, clear Roshan a little bit easier, though... It'll still be pretty slow and pretty risky if they get caught, because Earthshaker does have Blink, though he's only level 10, so it's a level 1 Echo Slam. I don't really know if either side can really easily take Roshan unless they get a nice pickoff. And speaking of pickoff, 
Well, Mago is going to get hit with the boat, but he does dodge a torrent. Salen all alone, though he does have some sword from DK. He will get tagged with an arrow and Mystic Flared. He does have the rum on him, but he's going to take a lot of damage regardless. Bonzo going to jump right in. No Doom used just yet. He's going to get the Doom ultimate on arc. There's a three-man Echo Slam from Mago. He'll demolish the Kunkka. Now going for Christine. It looks like they will be able to snag him. Yes, one more arrow. Mago gets a double kill. In the meantime, Reality in the back end has the BKB active. Going to chase down Zaido, but Nino still in a little bit of trouble. He's still alive. Guanzo going to get stunned by Mago and then the arrow. Jump forward from Mago, but still Reality is at full HP. They'll bring down the Doom, but can they bring down? Down DK in reality. Plaza Skill will kill off Robert and Zyder on the back end. So with the Exorcism active, looks like it will ultimately be a 3 for 3. Well, no fear Dota. Take a much better fight than I would really expect from them at this stage. As the Thundercats, the Kunkka kind of, you know, blowing his load a little bit early. Yeah, and also off of the back of that Blink Dagger, they were able to get a nice Echo Slam and... I don't know, get the early kills. Razor was being a nuisance in the background of the fight, and they also used their Doom on a Pugna... Uh, that really wasn't doing much in the fight anyway. Yeah, I'm not sure if there was a better Doom target, as Death Prophet had already used his or Exorcism, and it didn't really um, end up mattering. Life Drain! Oh! He kills himself on the Necro unit! Well, don't do that, Skyrath Mage. I thought... I, I wasn't actually watching, because I didn't expect that to happen. I thought for sure it would be the Necro units that should just whack in him, but you probably shouldn't do that. That's a uh, level 3 Necro, so that's, I believe, 600 pure damage, and we'll see how much health the Skyrath Mage actually has when he responds, but I can't imagine it's any more than, like, 800. Yeah, he was already kind of low, and the Pugna was life draining up the melee Necronomicon, and I thought he, um, or I'm sure that he thought that Arif would take that last hit, but in the end, he casted one more Arcane Bolt to drop it, and just killed himself on it, so a great miscalculation coming out from uh, the Skyrath Mage, and in the end... 910 HP really can't be affording to uh, kill this Necronomicon units. Up in top lane, Razor are going to say hello to the Marana, but as far as item pickups, the next big one is going to be the Doom, picking up an Aghanim Scepter. When you have an Aghanim Scepter on a target, that target's going to die on NFT. They're not tanky enough to survive through it, but they might be able to get the jump on Doom here off of the Observer Ward place down. They get the Gigasa shot, they silence him up, they're looking for the sign that's not going to be there, and in the end, the Fissure, it will set up for the Sky with Mage ulti. It's only going to drop into about half. The arrow is going to land on him in a nice choke point there, and that will secure the kill on the Doom. So good pickoff going the way of NFT, and Doom just getting caught out in a very awkward situation. I think the biggest part of that was... Um, Robert Niemeyer's arrow was just shot at a beautiful angle that the Doom really couldn't avoid um, very easily. These arrows from Marana have actually been pretty on point. Like, I'm pretty sure she has a very high hit percentage in this particular game, and that's certainly been helping No Fear Dota take these fights. Like, I know in that last mid fight, the Kunkka got tagged with an arrow at the very least, so. You know, not bad from this Marana, and well, off of that, they're going to try to go for Roshan. Doom down for another 20 seconds, but TC, they're closing in. They have Invoker and Kunkka and Razor in Roshan pit. Exorcism has been spent a lot for this Roshan. Now they're going to go right in. Razor pops to BKB, pops everything, and Zyto's going to get blown up instantly. Razor going to clean up Roshan in the meantime. Arf and Mego up at the sides will try to kill off Invoker as the Kunkka does do not the Scarath Mage. Looks like the Radiant will claim everything from this Roshan. No fear Dota. Just got Roche jacked as Nino. Gonna try to kill off the Shadow Demon, but will whiff his Mystic Flare DK. In the meantime, trying to zone out everyone else from No Fear Dota. But TC, they fight 4v5 and they clean house because No Fear Dota, well, they try to fight in the Roshan pit versus a Razor with BKB versus a Kunkka versus an Invoker. That's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, and now Razor with the Aghanim Scepter as well as a completed. Or Razor with an Aegis, as well as a completed Aghanim Scepter, I should say. They have the Glyph to delay this, but it's really not going to do much. They actually disrupt up reality, get some illusions that really aren't doing all that much. Uh, but in the end, he is going to um, pick that up. And now the towers are going to start falling as they try to initiate onto Guanzo a little bit, coming out from the uh, Pugna, as well as the Earthshaker. But in the end, the Tier 3 tower just doesn't stand a chance. Reality does have an Aghanim that he just picked up, so he's going to use Eye of the Storm right away. No fear, Dota, everyone's alive. Mago has only one point in Echo Slam despite being level 11, but he's, I don't think he's going to get the chance to cast anything. Yes, Reality's going to kill him off, and he's sitting in the middle of everyone. He's going to want to use the Aegis right here as the Eye of the Storm still starts ticking away at everyone else, though Moonlight Shadow will save them for a little bit longer. Salem's going to go for a Torrent, will whiff completely. Reality now popping off the BKB. Just going to finish off the ranged and melee Raxes just casually walking back after using his Aegis. Jump forward from Guanzo. We'll get the Doom onto Nino. That's going to be a dead Skyrath mage. As Guanzo does get put into a bubble. DK going to jump forward. They're trying to kill off Robert, but he's going to get your fight, so we can't do any physical damage. Now, the boat will come in. Those Zyda will dodge the X with that Yules. I don't think he's going to get out of here either. No fear Dota. Their base is going to be very quickly overrun. Guanzo and DK, 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Robert Niemeyer with pretty nice accuracy, so I'm not crazy. It's good to know, but DK uh, with the summons and the Necro units, they have just so much momentum right now. And, well, level one Echo Slam comes in big. It's going to get a kill, and it's actually two in the end. Reality with another Eye of the Storm, however, is going to zone out Arf, kill him off lightning strikes, and Mago, the carry shaker, can't do any damage because of that plasma field. Robert Niemeyer going to try to kill off Salen. Salen hiding in the trees, and Guanzo will be his savior. Scarf Mage is the only one alive. And their two racks is down. This has got to be GG. Yeah, I'm just assuming they're not going to call it. It is an ultra cool for reality at the end of the day and a full team wipe in their favor. So TC, after taking the two racks, it will be GG called out by Migo. No big surprises there at the end of the day. But yeah, Invoker style points for picking up the Basher for the victory screen. Um, I don't know. Well, that's going to be it as far as these games are concerned. Despite having a Mirana that was really on point with those arrows, the Shadow Demon as well as the... Um, Kunkka just making a lot of things happen. I think the biggest issue they had with No Fear Dota's lineup was the way that they decided to lane it. I think if they just went uh, for the safer route and went for the defensive tri lane with the Pugna as the farming core in there, they would have been a lot better off. The Doom ended up just getting so much out of the laning phase, killed the Marana twice, and it just kind of fell off the wheels from there. The Thundercats got one good fight after that, but it was not looking great. Or rather, No Fear Dota got one good fight. Yeah, Guanzo had great game one and a great game two the the score for game two not as impressive still the doom had so much presence in that fight it was really reality who stole the show in the end with that razor but say razor only did so well because of the supports because of the rotations from this kunkka and shadow demon getting kills all around the map and that's going to give thundercats a very very easy very clean 2-0 victory over no fear dota yeah, so in the end, that's going to be it for Amplit TV, at least for tonight, and American Dota is over. Um, well, we will be back later on with some European Dota at about 18 CET, I think is when that's going to start here on Heflit TV 2 as well as Heflit TV 1. Uh, but if you do like the casting here, you can follow us on Heflit TV on Twitter as well as Facebook, and the VODs will be uploaded to youtube.com slash Heflamoke. If you're interested, want to share them with your friends, want to watch them again for yourself. Your casters for today have been Grandis V, and I've been joined by Mike Loris, and we've also... Um, I had the pleasure of having some stats provided by a JD admin, so that's pretty cool as well. Um, so, thanks for watching. GG to both teams. GG, guys.